Welcome back to the second part of the Hyrule Warriors tier list. So, I'm not going to go over how I'm organizing the video or, or the tier list or anything like that. I covered that in the first part and that took like 5 minutes. I'm not going to waste time doing that again. So, if you're kind of confused of like how I'm creating this, just go watch like the first 5 minutes of the bottom tier video. Even if you don't really care about the bottom tiers. Um, so, anyways, low tier. So, low tiers are basically the worst characters in the game that don't actually have any, like, significant problems, so they are so playable. I don't know really how to say this without being, like, rude. So, if you do put enough work into these characters, you can get results with them, good results, but it's just gonna require more work, and it's sometimes kind of annoying, and some of these do fail at key aspects of the game, but nothing's too crippling like the bottom tiers. So, also in low tier, since this is basically treated as an everything is equal, all weapons and characters I mention in this video are equal. So it doesn't matter what I say first in this video, it doesn't matter what I say last in this video, everything is treated as the same. So no, there's no character in this video that's better than another, is what I'm trying to say. But anyways, let's just get into it. The magic rod is a very basic weapon. It does basically everything you're going to want it to do, but nothing extra. So it can rack up KOs, okay, it can deal with giant bosses, okay, it has 1v1 options that are just kind of okay, and it's not really safe, but it does have range, so if you do utilize that range, it can be sort of safe, but there's nothing really extra, that's like the actual limit that you can do so it can rack up KOs but it can't rack up very many KOs I mean combo 3 is basically its best move but you're not gonna actually get very many KOs with just a single use of that you're gonna have to use it a few times and the moves in general are kind of slow so again utilize your range but even then it's still kind of annoying 1v1 you have very limited options it's like kinda you can spam combo 3 uh, you can try to set up something with combo 2, but then that's about it. So, it's mostly just a weapon that, yeah, you can A-rank stuff with it, and there's no problem with that. It's just, you are very, very limited, and you have to play exactly how the weapon was basically designed to play. Except for the fact that combo 1 is terrible, and I think that was supposed to be an integral part of the moveset, but it's not gets a terrible move, whatever. Um, so, yeah, it's just so rigid and you can't really adjust it to different situations. So, you will have to try really hard to actually get results with it. But it's definitely not impossible, and if you can work with it, then that's perfectly fine. The Great Fairy is such an interesting and different weapon, and before Legends came out I honestly thought it was probably the most underrated weapon because it actually was pretty decent. And it still is, I mean nothing was actually changed about it. So what are its pros? It has so much range! You can hit things, you can cover entire keeps with a single move, and that's like most to every single move in the move set. So, yeah, range is fine. Power, the damage on it is sky high, and if you use combo 1, that gets doubled. So, you are doing insane amounts of damage, and the weak point smash is just crazy for range and damage. And combo potential, there's absolutely none. This weapon has no combo potential, but that doesn't really matter because you're just spamming attacks anyways. And also, every combo attack is invincible. So, as long as you are performing a combo attack, you're not taking damage, except for combo 1, combo 1 you can get hit in, but that's not an attack, that's just a buff. Um, but that's about where the pros end, and then you kind of realize the weapon just devolves into go up to a group of enemies, spam an attack, hope it hits, if it doesn't hit, try again, and just keep trying again over and over again until it does work. And 
then you kind of just see this weapon gets very, very basic, and there's not really much you can do. And it's also terrible with giant bosses. It cannot deal with any giant bosses to save its life. <laughs> also, for some reason, even without the combo 1 buff, it takes double damage compared to any other weapon or character in the game. I don't know why they did that. And then also, when, so then when you use the combo 1 buff, you're taking 4 times the damage. But with how much invincibility it has, it's actually one of the easiest weapons to do no damage runs in the game. But if you're also just doing a normal run through the game, you probably won't get hit a lot if you have hasty, if you don't have hasty. But this is a tier list with hasty. So yeah, just ignore that. But yeah, it's kind of just like bashing your head against a wall until something happens. <laughs> That's not really the ideal way to play, but yeah, it can work. It's just, you're kind of, definitely need hasty, and then just kind of a bit of luck, and just hope you hit stuff. So the rapier, or er, rapier, rapier, okay, it's rapier, whatever. The rapier is actually really good at racking up KOs, it can do well against giant bosses, it is kind of safe. It does have combos for 1v1 situations and can also just handle 1v1 situations generally well. But it's in low tier because all of that is a huge sometimes, depending on light orbs. Because it's all basically a juggle of, okay, I need light orbs now. Oh wait, now I don't need light orbs. Oh, uh, I need to get my light orbs back. Oh wait, no wait, get them away. I need to get rid of them because I don't need my light orbs right now. It's better if I don't have them. And it's just a huge juggle. And overall, it also just doesn't deal much damage in general. And with all of these things, comparing it to like the mid-tier weapons, it's just kind of too much to juggle around, and it doesn't really have that much benefit than comparing it to some of the mid-tier weapons. So that's why I just put it into low tier, because it's like, yeah, it has options, it can do well, but at the same time, you're just doing way too much work for not enough payoff. And that's just why it's in low tier. Also, buff the light orb combo 5, triforce, explosion, attack, whatever that attack has problems. Like. The baton is a weapon I feel like gets overlooked a lot. And that kind of makes sense because it doesn't really have much standing out about it except for its range. Its range is pretty phenomenal and pretty abusive. You can abuse that range quite easily. But other than that, it doesn't really have a whole lot of damage except for like a full powered up combo one. But let's be real, how many times in a match are you actually going to be able to fully power up combo one? Not very often. And if you do. How often are you going to do it and actually not get hit while doing it? I mean, you can, but it's not something you can just use over and over again, which is kind of a problem. Giant bosses are a pain. 1v1, it's basically you have to space out the enemy because you really just can't get close to anything, but everything does have range, so that's fine. But at the same time, you're not really going to be doing much damage with it, so it's mostly an endurance test of... How long can you actually keep the enemy away from you and make it so that you won't get hit because you probably will get hit just because how unsafe this is. There are a few attacks that actually do like stun the enemy like combo 6 but at the same time it's just like uh, you're kind of it's kind of like the rapier and it's just you're basically putting in too much effort for something that doesn't have enough payoff, but even more so than the rapier in my opinion, because it's just, mm, it needs a lot of work. And its range is pretty much the only good aspect about it, like if you're playing two players you could probably combo it up with something else, but I mean like you're putting too much effort into it already, so it's best to just kind of ignore this unless you're Graf, because Graf makes this weapon look amazing, but uh, yeah he's the exception, otherwise no. <laughs> Lana's stick, and 
Let's just be real. It's a stick, not a spear. I don't know why they call it a spear. It's just literally a stick. Wood, whatever. Whatever. Um, Solana's stick, originally when the game first came out, was one of the worst weapons in the game. Probably the worst. As in, if it wasn't buffed, then it would have been below the giant blade. It would be the worst thing in the game because that thing was just awful. But it's been buffed a lot since, but still, it's just low tier. So, basically... It does have kind of some range, and it does kind of have some power, but those range come in really weird, awkward moves. And also that range and power is separated, so it's you either use a move with range or use, use a move with power. But if you use a powerful move like combo 4 or the last hit of the regular string, because that does a ton of damage, um, you basically just hit directly in front of you. Or if you do an attack like combo 3 with range, you're not really going to do much damage. And it's just kind of like a thing of, oh well, it's okay at this thing. It's like, okay yeah, you can rack up KOs, but you can only really rack up KOs with like combo 5 or the weak string. And either way, you're going to have to go through most of the weak string, and that's going to take a while. And the Genshin Giant bosses actually does kind of well at uh, 1v1, it's like, okay, you're gonna have to space stuff out and just wait a really, really, really long time to actually be able to kill the enemy. Or you can try to rush in and use, like, pow more powerful attacks, but at the same time, you're making yourself very vulnerable and you probably will get hit. And it's just... Eh, it doesn't really do much. And the special attack covers, like very little range and doesn't really do much damage. It actually covered less range before it was buffed. It was like, no. <laughs> and yeah, it's just not that great. And also, being in the air from combos 2 and 5 is kind of pointless because, I mean, you're stationary most of the time, so that makes you an easy target to hit. And even though you can move, you can't really move fluidly. It's pretty stiff, and also just the aerial attacks from those don't really do much either. So, it's mostly just kind of like a defensive weapon mostly of just keeping things away. But defensive things in this game just don't really work, because there's not really very many missions, if at all, where you have to just defend something. It's mostly you have to go places, you have to go initiate fights, and this thing just can't do that. And that's why it's not that great. Fi is such a controversial character because she's seen as such a terrible character by most people. And the sad part is that most of the negatives they call Fi out on are not even true. But in the end of the day, she's still not that great of a character, sadly. So, first off, she is one of the best characters at racking up KOs. That cannot be denied. She, her attacks have so much range, and she's completely mobile while doing it. And if you're not doing enough damage to mobs to kill them in one hit, then you need to kind of level her up or get no healing or something on her. Because, for the most part, she should be one-shotting, or at least, like, with combo four, since it hits multiple times, at least, just during this span of the attack, it should kill stuff. So, her damage for at least mobs is not garbage, so that's fine. Giant bosses... She's the worst character in the game. She's the only character in the game that sometimes requires two specials against giant bosses. That's awful. Um, so then the only thing that's left is 1v1. So 1v1 for Fi is kind of tricky because at one point she's completely mobile and her attacks for the most part hit all around her and that makes her seem really safe and quite a few of them have invincibility as well. And then also you have the cases of like combo 5 and combo 6 that deal kind of a lot of damage. I'd say combo 5 is a better move against combo 6, so if, yeah, if you're running up to something and just using combo 6, then you're not playing fire right. Fi is a character that's meant to be more of 
a dancer. She's supposed to be moving around while hitting things. So if you're just standing right in front of an enemy trying to spam weak string and then combo 6, that's not going to work. Because even though combo 6 is invincible, you can't get hit at the start or end of the attack. And that's not a good thing. So you kind of want to weave in and weave out while hitting things. But at the same time, it's kind of just so much going in and out and in and out to be able to like just actually deal with things quickly. And even though her attacks are kind of relatively safe, they do kind of lack damage unless you're just spamming, spamming, spamming damage modifiers on it. So yeah, I said like the mobs, but like the mobs, they have like so little health. But against like actual enemies that you're gonna actually need to be doing lots of damage on, then you're kind of not doing enough to be able to contest with like mid or high tier characters. Fly, I was actually considering putting in mid tier, but it's like, no, not really at the end of the day. She is still really fun though, and I would recommend at least just trying her out if you think she actually is like garbage, the worst character in the game or whatever. She's definitely not. So that's the low tier of my higher Warriors tier list. So I didn't really go into much detail as I did in bottom tier, because bottom tier there's only three weapons, so I kind of have more time, so if I just take five minutes to talk about each weapon, that's not really much of a problem. But I mean, like, once I get up to high tier, which right now has 12 weapons, which might or might not change, that's an hour long video, no one's gonna actually want to watch that. But at the same time, if I wanted to actually say, oh yeah, this is one of the worst things in the game, I probably can't just go in and say, it's bad, the end of video. So, like, I kind of need to actually give some details on that. But yeah, for the rest of the series, it's basically going to be more quicker explanations like this. Um, Mid-tier may take a while longer because that's like the one tier I'm kind of unsure of. I might move some stuff up. I might not. But yeah, that video may take a while to get up. And, but for the meantime, pretty much high and top tier I'm fine with. It's mostly just mid tier. I don't know if I want to move stuff up or not. Definitely didn't want to move anything down, so that's why I'm fine with making this video. This won't change. But, yeah. That's all. Bye.